Hello, I'm going to show you a revolutionary new atomic model, which I call the cubic atomic model. Uh, for more information about this theory, you can go to yahoo.com and search for cubic atomic model. Now, my model starts out very simply. It just thinks about how would a proton, an electron, act uh, in order to form an atom. And what I have in my model here is I've created uh, some blocks. The red blocks represent protons, and the black blocks represent electrons. And I put uh, Velcro on them such that they will stick together uh, when you have basically opposite charges. So, starting out with the most basic atom, helium, I mean hy hydrogen, this is what I believe hydrogen is. It's just simply a proton and an electron attached together. You notice that the electron does not in any way orbit around the proton nucleus. It is actually just stuck right onto the proton, and it stays like that. Simple. Now, we also have things called neutrons in the atomic model, and I believe that these are also made out of basically a proton and an electron. This is a bit of a simplification. And so when you add, you, when you add a neutron onto, say, hydrogen, you get something which looks like this. And this is what I believe is called a deuterium atom, which is basically an isotope of hydrogen which has one neutron. I believe this forms the building blocks for all the rest of the larger atoms. So, if we go and get two deuterium and we fuse them together, what we get is a nice cube shape. And this is helium. And you can see the two protons, the two neutrons, and the two electrons. So let's go on. Now we have uh, another deuterium atom, and we attach this, and it can only go on one way. And now we have the element lithium. Now this is no longer a cube, and uh, what I've noticed is that anything which is not part of a cube tends to be chemically reactive. So uh, this, this helium base is not reactive, but this half cube can react with something else, to form another compound. So, for example, if we had another uh, hydrogen atom out here, this, uh, this hydrogen atom could attach to this lithium atom to produce a lithium hydrogen molecule like that. And it will only produce, it will, it's, since it only has basically one docking port, uh, lithium can make, only form compounds with single atoms like this. So let's go on, adding another, another uh, set here, and you have to maintain a, a correct pattern here in order for this to go on. There we go. You see it forms a neat pattern. Uh, this is what we have. This is known as beryllium. And this is a this has basically two docking ports, one on each side, and it forms uh, molecules with two elements in generally a linear fashion. Okay, next up we have boron. So let's just attach this down here. Now here we have boron, and it has one, two, three attachment points, so it will typically form uh, compounds with three elements and generally in a triangular uh, flat uh, molecule. Next we have carbon. Alright, so this is carbon. Um, it's perfectly symmetrical and they explain why it has a zero magnetic moment. And it has four possible bonding locations. Okay, going on next is nitrogen. So now in nitrogen, we actually are now formed another helium uh, nucleus over here. And so we've actually lost the binding site. So uh, nitrogen actually contains three binding sites. Next, we have oxygen. 
and there we lose another binding site. So now we only have two binding sites and they generally form uh, 90 degree bonds. And so this is how you, for example, H2O, two hydrogens would be attached on this side of the oxygen to form water. Next, we have fluorine. And the, everything has now formed up a helium nucleus except for this side. And so it can only form compounds with one other atom. Then finally, we add one more deuterium. And then what we have here is that we have neon. Now, neon is composed entirely of just helium nuclei. So there's actually no reactivity at all, and that explains the non-reactivity of helium. Thank you for your time.